Okay, uh, let's keep talking about the the last part of NumPy, and I hope I can finish it today. Um, I'm looking at this big screen so that it's easier for me to count, rather than making a lot of mistakes uh, in the previous videos, uh, because this this laptop screen is pretty small. So I'm looking at this. I hope that it doesn't really bother you. Um, you you should focus on the on the slides and my codes. Um, the the big screen facilitates me to to code um, on Spider here. Okay. Um, we talked about the the operators and some functions on NumPy, and there were also some comparison and logic operators for NumPy. For example. Uh, we just uh, simply define these two arrays, and this is A and this is B. And uh, we, if we want to make the element-wise comparison between A and B, that is to see whether each of the corresponding pairs of the uh, uh, elements in A and B whether they are the same, we can do A equal B. Remember that we use the double equal sign because the 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 single equal sign is assignment of value rather than uh, to test whether they are they are equal or not. So you see that when one and one they are equal, um, we we see a true here, and uh, two and two they are equal, so we we have a true. Three and five they are not equal, so we have a we have a, a false. Okay. Maybe I can uh, do this. So you can see. Yeah. Maybe here you can see me better. I hope so. Um, <coughs> um, you can also use the equal. I think it, sh it should be the mp dot equal if I remember right. Calculate the functional equivalent of uh, of A and B by doing this, and it's going to give you the same thing. So I encourage you to do this because it's uh, more convenient. Now, uh, not only you can do the double equal sign, you can also use a greater than or equal to, less logical or, or others. For example, I can also use uh, not equal. And see whether they see they are the exactly the opposite, or I can use smaller than or equal to, and you will you will you will see that because three is smaller than five, so this becomes true. Okay, actually, except for this, all the other seven pairs are true because this is false because uh, two is greater than one. Um, trigonometric and the other functions are those you learn in high school. Uh, sine, cosine, um, not cosine. Um, of this, uh, remember if you uh, if you want to use them, sh uh, you should have uh, mp dot sine. Okay. Uh, in Arabic, let me let me try to have this. So it's gonna calculate the the the, the sine of uh, each element in A. Uh, you can do this directly when you use from mp imports from numpy imports import this. Okay, then you can do. Okay, it's, uh, it's gonna give you the same thing. Okay, <coughs> you can also calculate the 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 element act, uh, distance. There are a, a number of distance. For example, uh, the the cosine distance. And um, um, there, there were a lot of di different, say, uh, cosine distance kind of. Oh. Yeah. So this is a this is a distance in SciPy. So in SciPy, there was a spatial distance. Package and there is a package in this package uh, called distance, and uh, there is a function um, to calculate the distance. I think in 
yeah, cosine similarity, there are other different uh, similarity, uh, the, 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 the distances, the, the spatial distances in Python. But here, we probably just use the high part. Maybe I just use hyper because I have already a dot b. Okay. Um, so this is one algorithm to calculate the element by element distance um, using the x square plus y square, and you take the square root of it. It has a lot of uh, building functions. For example, uh, we we talked about uh, comparison, uh, the arithmetic, check the metric. You also have the uh, hyperbolic and exponential. For example, if you want to have uh, exp, because I have already imported all the functions here, so I can just uh, use a to uh, e to the power of two. Okay. Uh, Uh, and you can calculate the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay. And uh, power is to the power of what? So you have 2 to the power of 3. You have 8. Okay. You have the logical operators and, not all, and uh, predicates uh, like uh, whether it's an AN. So on so forth. You wanna you wanna check. For example, you can use a for loop, and you go over the all the every element of a list, and you wanna check uh, if each element is a missing value. If it's missing value, then it's uh, an an. For example, mp dot an an is uh, is uh, an an. So is an an mp dot an an. This should be true because it is a an an. But if you Raised by six, it's false. So <coughs> my list is equal to one, two, three, four. Then I have a missing value. When I import the data, I find a missing value, and uh, I want to know how many missing values do I have in my list. I well. Um, there are a lot of ways of doing this. Uh, for example, one way is for every element. For, for example, it's a counter count equals zero. And for item in, let's say I, in my list, if is an an i or mp dot is an an i is true. I okay plus equal. Let's let's just uh, make it easier. Okay. Then in the end, I want to check. Then count is two. Okay, count is two. There are other ways. For example, um, um, I'm not sure if I can do this. Let me let me try, but maybe not. No, I can do this. So um, so you got two false here. Um, you you can apply this function to my list, so uh, it's gonna check whether every, <coughs> each of the element is uh, is an a or not. Then I. Check. Mm. Mm. Let me think. Mm. Maybe I can do this. Yeah. So we can directly do this, and this will be. Um, yeah, I think this is a this is the easiest way of calculating the number of missing variables values. In uh, maybe I'll I'll make it the final exam. I think this is a very good one. Um, 
there are also other uh, building functions for for example sail floor uh, if you have no idea what this is um, sail is say like 5.6 is gonna give you and 5.1 is gonna give you so this returns this function returns a smallest integer that is larger than the number that you are given uh, well floor gives you the largest integer that is smaller than the number that you are given for example one this should be five and this is also five and uh, this is six okay you can try a uh, different one of the one of them um, by yourself you should and you should okay access um, so every method reductions take optional access it's an optional access parameter that specifies over which access to reduce so uh, so which I think this is a typo okay. uh, which or, or maybe it's not I'm not sure. So um, when you are just using a a dot sum, for example, you uh, define a as a equals a p dot arrange fifteen, and uh, you reshape it to three five, and you will have this. And if you just calculate a dot sum. It's gonna give you the sum of all these numbers, okay? But if you wanna check the sum of every column, you should use the sum axis equals zero. It's by column, okay? It's gonna give you the zero plus five plus ten, you get a fifteen. And then four plus nine plus fourteen, you get a twenty-seven, okay? And if you use axis equal one. You will have uh, the 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 sum of a row, sum of all uh, all elements in the row. Uh, fancy indexing. Okay. Um, you can also use the arrays as indexes. It's not. It's very fancy. So. Um, I don't suggest you to use it if you're a beginner, but uh, but if you want to use it, it's not a bad idea. Maybe uh, this is a yeah, this is just a, and uh, let's see. I is this, J is this, and A is this. <clears throat> what if I do, I wanna have, you see, if I wanna have one, one, then there's uh, second column, sec second row, then it's six, right? So what What if I wanna have I, J, okay? This will give you two, six, nine, uh, 14. This is because when you are doing the IJ, actually it's looking at, for the first one is zero, row zero, column two. So row zero is the first row, and column two is the third column, which is two, okay? Then this one is the second row, is this row, and this column, one. So this column second column and this is a uh, second row fifth column so it's not and this is the third row fifth column okay um, you can also uh, use uh, boolean arrays so for example, this is, we could still have the A here, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, 
we we talked that if we say if we just do this equals seven, we will find that all of these uh, before seven will be true and the other will be false. This is a Boolean expression comparison, and we can also check if the remainder is zero, right? So we have this we have this uh, Boolean array, and we can assign this Boolean array to B. So B will be this. And I can just show, I can just slice, make a part of A that when B is true. So I will just have this, this, this. So I will have just uh, this, 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 and this, and uh, this. C so I will have just this. Or, you don't have to. You, if you want to have all the, see, if you have an array like this, and you, if you just want to have um, all the elements, you don't want to have a slice of this array where all the elements can be divided by three. You can simply do a. Okay, and if you want to have it by one, you can get this. This is pretty, pretty fast. NumPy has other functions. Um, this is the data input, output. You can load the data using the from file, load, load text, the save, save text. This is to output, save this text. And you can uh, create the, the mesh using mesh grid, okay, or O grid. And you can manipulate this using uh, H stack and take and the uh, vest stack. Uh, these uh, these are not that. This is very often used, but not uh, not our focus. So if you are interested, you can check them by yourself. <coughs> also, you can use a polynomial FFT to um, to do the data manipulation. For example, if you want to get efficient uh, uh, polynomials, okay. There are a lot of uh, C standard library math functions in the NumPy.math, and um, and this we will talk about this uh, specifically uh, because NumPy.random is a very efficient way to uh, to or to generate the random numbers. Why do we need the random numbers? Because when you are using the when you are doing the Monte Carlo simulation uh, in the future data processing, you probably, probably want to do the simulation. You probably want to do the bootstrap. Uh, if you learned statistics before, if you haven't, it's fine. If you learn them, you know what it means. Uh, it basically means that you generate the, uh, uh, the pseudo, we don't say fake, but it's fake. The pseudo numbers, <coughs> pseudo is a more professional way to call fake. Um, pseudo numbers from um, statistical distribution. And uh, because they are randomly chosen from a distribution and they are not real, they are not real uh, observations from the reality. So we call them just uh, the the pseudo realizations of the random of uh, for, for the random variables. And how do you check? How do you uh, generate the random variables from a, a distribution? You you can use uh, NumPy random. So you can generate them from a gamma distribution, like log no, normal distribution, uniform distribution, Poisson distribution. Okay. Uh, let's take an example like this. This is to generate the pure random variables and uh, yeah just see every time you see every time I I enter the same command it returns different sets of numbers because they are random so if I want to specify that I want to uh, generate the numbers from this distribution so this is a uh, mean and this is standard deviation. Okay, if you learn log, uh, if you learn normal distribution or or Gaussian di distribution, Gaussian distribution is a is a normal distribution. Um, if you learn it, you know that there is a so this is a bear shaped a bear shaped uh, distribution. Uh, let, let me show you. 